Hi everyone and welcome to episode 3 of my new season 2 Factorio series. My name is Pooper and we're going to be adding on to the setup where we left off last episode with this very primitive assembly machine setup for our red and green science packs and our very basic materials that are used in the base. So hopefully today we will be able to optimize more as well as add to more automation. Since last episode, I was able to build up a decent amount of our transport belts, as well as one full stack of our yellow inserters, and then we even have a couple of the upgraded Assembly 2 machines ready to go. So that should be a decent start towards getting more automation of the basic components we're going to be needing and using around the base frequently. Today my priority is probably getting automation first of all of our electric mining drills and then our assembly machines, and then we can go from there. So for starters, we're going to be using our assembly machine 2s because I know a couple of recipes require that they cannot be made in the assembly 1 machines. They do have to be built in the assembly 2s. The first of those being the electric mining drills. So I want to put the electric mining drill assembly machine here because we can end up just using the electric circuits from this box here. Let's go ahead and put in our inserter there now. But I do still want to leave this buffer box here so that if we do need some for our pocket or for building some other things, we can go ahead and grab the stack that's in here as well. But we'll go ahead and put in the recipe now so we can know all of the components that go into this. So the green circuits are now covered, but we do need to find a way to get the iron gear wheels and the iron plate to this machine here. Now one thing I want to try and do is avoid having too many provider boxes around here because that means I have less to keep track of for what I need to refill. So here's an example of that. This is a box that's providing our iron plate. Here's the one for our copper plate. And it's just kind of a little bit of a pain having to remind myself to refill these when I want to make sure that we have enough to supply for our automation. So if there is a way to get iron plate up here from this box, I would like to do that. But what I'm thinking we'll do instead is actually change where our input of this iron plate is. And we'll end up moving it so we can put an underground belt here and then have it extend to this inserter here. There we go. That should cover it for the iron plate line. We'll just extend it up now. And then we'll have a little box at the end that will then supply our stacks of iron plate. All right, perfect. The inserter there will pick up the iron plate and now the only thing it's missing are the iron gear wheels and that will be a really easy fix. We just have to extend this line here and we can do that by doing another underground belt just like that. Actually, Looks like we may have to move the pole or else there won't be room for an inserter. So we're going to move the electrical pole instead to right there will work. And this is throwing off my electrical pole symmetry a little bit, but that is something I'll have to get over with for now. And then we'll just do something like that. And then we could even take a splitter, put it right there. And that way this line can still continue on if we need the iron gear wheels for something else. All right, so this should now be getting everything it needs. Now we just have to put in an output box for that. We can go ahead and put it right next to our green circuit uh, box. We just have to make a chest real quick here. And then I'm going to make sure I cap it off because I don't want overproduction of this at all. And I'm just going to put a couple extra of those in there. And then to get rid of my surplus, I'll just go ahead and direct insert my iron gear wheels into the machine. So we have our electric mining drills now taken care of. The next thing I want to do is worry about getting the automation of the assembly machines themselves. So we should first work on getting automation of the assembly one machines because the assembly twos require the assembly ones. So the assembly ones, it turns out, actually take the exact same things the electric mining drills take. So we'll see if there's any way we can just grab from 
what these are taking and using over here. We'll again put down our assembly machine. Um, we could possibly just put it up here and then do some underground work with our green circuits or let's put it there for symmetry purposes and see if there's a way we can get our green circuits over here on this side. I think what we could do is we'll unfortunately have to get rid of this buffer box but maybe we can put it somewhere else in the future or uh, eh, it's not too important anyway we can put it at the end we'll do that. We'll see if this is long enough. Ooh, and it's just not quite long enough. Can we research the upgraded belts yet? That is a good question. Let's take a look there. I know that requires the Logistics 2, which when we ended in the previous episode is a lot of science packs when you look at it uh, this early on in the game. But it definitely doesn't hurt when we have this many stacked up and ready to go as it is. So let's go ahead and start the research and then if we have to pause it and move on to some other research in the future, we can. So let's go ahead and start that now while we're continuing to work. I'm hoping though that we can extend this line, but another thing we might be able to do is just move one of these boxes. So we could move this box actually and then put it here, which means we have to move this pole, put that pole there, another electrical pole there. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of coverage with the electrical poles, but what we can do instead is put a long-handed inserter there. Oh no, but that's not gonna have coverage which means we have to move our light. Okay, but now everything has electrical coverage and it is looking like a big spaghetti mess. Uh, but that's kind of the fun part of the game is problem solving little things like this and then finding your solutions. So now we can go back to moving this box. We can put that, oh, we already did. We put that over here. Let's not forget to cap that off. And then we can now have this belt fit underneath those components there. The red and blue belts have the longest coverage of the underground belt lines, which is why it is appealing to go for those um, closer to early to mid game when you can, but they are more expensive. But this way we have a solution just in case our logistics research doesn't get done and looking here, we're already running low for, on our green science packs and these will be pretty slow going. It looks like we're already running out of the resources. So this is already out of the iron plate. So let's go ahead, pop in what I have and then I'm gonna grab some more iron plate from a storage box I have down here. We'll grab that all and then put it back up in the box so it can get utilized instead of just sitting idle. All right, there we go. So green science packs should be back to work once we have more production of our yellow inserters. It looks like we're now just waiting on our green circuits, which again are reliant on iron plate. So it looks like all the iron plate is actually going towards the iron gear wheels instead. So this is definitely not the most optimized setup in the world, but it will theoretically eventually work if you give it enough time. Okay, where were we? We were working on getting our green circuits over here to this assembly machine, which once we actually have green circuit production, it should get transferred on this belt here underground and then we'll have an inserter go into this one here. So that is our green circuits handled. Let's go ahead and put in the recipe though. This is again the assembly machine one recipe. So green circuits handled. Now we have to worry about our iron plate and the iron gear wheels. So for iron plate, that will be the easiest thing to solve of course because we have the line right here. And for iron gear wheels, let's go ahead and just extend the line up a little bit more. 
we'll have to use or make a couple more underground uh, belts there. And we're having to change the electrical poles set up a little bit here too. There we go. So now everything should have electrical coverage, which it does. So now we can do a red inserter. That is now grabbing the iron gear wheels from this line. So now we just have to worry about the output, which we can really put anywhere. We have a lot of room for that. Let's go ahead and we'll put it here, right there though. Okay. And then again, we're gonna cap this off at one stack, although it, in a case like this, I really wish I had our um, ability to do circuit uh, smarts instead so that we could only have a couple in here instead of a full stack. But now what we can do is add on one other assembly machine. And this way we can see if we can start automating the assembler twos. Now these take again the exact same things as the assembly one machines. So we will have to end up putting it, I think, up above it. So we'll do just like that. But now we can have an inserter direct input these products into this one over here. And then we'll just continue our iron gear wheel line like so, and we can move our electrical pole again. And then we can actually direct take the iron plate from the box if we want, or we could extend this even further up if we wanted to, but I'm okay with it taking from the box for now. We'll do another long-handed inserter, add some electricity. Then we need to worry about how this one will get the green circuits. So what we could do, hmm. Let's see, this one I'm a little bit more stumped on. Huh. We could just snake it around, and I think that might be the best solution I have at this point. So we'll do something like this, where we're just gonna curve it around here, and that way it'll go up, and then we can get the green circuits from this line here. I don't typically like spaghetti in my factories, and this is definitely an instance of that where everything just seems disorganized and it's not in the ideal locations to be near everything, so this will get optimized and reworked on as soon as possible, but right now I am putting aesthetics uh, to the wayside and I am, the first priority really has to be just getting things up and running. So then we need our output box. We'll do another one right there. Let's put in a recipe. And this won't be working for some time because we, again, don't have our green circuits being produced right now. Our uh, iron gear wheels are a little too greedy and taking everything for that to be working. But over time, this will eventually work. We'll again make sure we have that capped off. But I think that is actually a lot of progress done for one episode. We've gotten a lot of uh, spaghetti done, a lot of automation done, and then we weren't able to get the optimization that I wanted to done in today's episode, but we'll have to wait and do that for episode four. So I hope you'll stick around for that one. But thanks for joining me for episode three, and I'll be seeing you guys soon.